This short Learn Electrics video looks at three-phase motor control wiring for direct online or DOL motors. This is more to do with how the wiring is arranged so that the motor can be safely and correctly started and stopped. And we will explain in step-by-step -step detail how it achieves this. There are always many questions on three-phase motors and some of the most recent have included how do I wire a three-phase motor control circuit? I can't follow the wiring diagram. Please explain the sequence of how it works. What components do I need for a motor circuit? And more. So, let's get started. What do we need in order to build a direct online three-phase motor circuit? Not a lot, as it turns out. We need a three-phase isolator, a three-phase motor contactor, an overload relay, a stop and start switch, and, not forgetting, a suitable three-phase motor. These are the same components as shown in the photos on the previous slide, but now in schematic form as they might appear on technical drawings and showing the required normally open and normally closed switch connections. In this video, we will assume that the motor contactor uses a 230 volt coil at the A1 and A2 terminals, so we've included a neutral supply along with the isolator. The overload relay must be matched to the current rating of the motor, and more on this soon. And then we will need a start switch and a stop switch in order to control the motor operation. This video is about the motor control circuit how we wire the actual motor for star or delta operation is a subject of other Learn Electrics videos. So what is normally open and normally closed? Normally open or NO contacts are open and prevent current flow when the motor contactor is de-energised, in other words, with the power off. Energising the contactor will cause the contact to close and allow current to flow. Normally closed, or NC, means that the contacts are closed when the motor contactor is de-energised or powered off and current can flow through the contacts. When the contactor is energised, when voltage is applied to the contactor, the contacts will open and current flow stops. So let's look at how we should connect these components together and start at the beginning with the isolator in the off position. In other words, the motor circuit is dead. Shown at the top here is the lower end of the isolator, which is, for now, turned off. Any grey coloured cables or terminals are indicating that no voltage is present at that place at that moment in time. So with the isolator in the off position, all the cables and terminals have zero volts on them. There is no voltage on the control circuit. I have used the letters A to H to indicate certain cables to aid understanding of the operational flow. Next, turn the isolator on. We will apply power to the circuit. With the isolator turned on, we have three-phase power at the base of the isolator. Following standard numbering convention, these will be marked as 2, 4 and 6. Three coloured cables will connect the isolator to the motor contactor and we've used the old colour convention for 400 volts three phase of red, yellow and blue wires as they are easier to distinguish on computers and tablets. The terminals are also coloured red, yellow and blue as 400 volts is now present at these points. A wire labelled wire B leaves the blue terminal of the isolator and is connected to the normally closed reset or off switch. This wire B is coloured brown to indicate that it has a voltage of 230 volts with reference to the neutral wire at A. 230 volts passes through the closed off switch and travels along wire C to one side of the on or start switch. The start switch is normally open so voltage cannot pass through it. The 230 volts continues on its way along wire D to the normally closed contacts of the overload relay. 
through the relay onto wire E and then to terminal number 14 of the motor contactor where it stops. The motor does not start because we still do not have 230 volts at the A2 terminal. At this moment in time, all the switched contacts L1, T1, L2, T2, L3, T3 and 13, 14 are in the open position. Now we can press the on button and start the motor rotating. Pressing the green on or start switch will close the start switch contacts and allow 230 volts to pass onto wire F. Up wire F to wire G and terminal A2 on the contactor. With 230 volts between A2 and the neutral at A1, the contactor coil is energized and pulls the contactor in and closes the contacts. 400 volts can now pass along L1, T1, L2, T2 and L3, T3 to the motor. 230 volts can also travel through terminal 14 to terminal 13. We can now release the start switch as the circuit will hold itself on as the 230 volts at terminal 13 will pass along wire H to wire G and into terminal A2 where it will continue to energize the contactor coil. The contactor will remain in the energized state. The relay contacts will remain in the closed positions and the voltages required will continue to flow. The contactor is electrically locked into the on position and is said to be self-maintaining. Now, let's say that we wish to stop the motor. What happens when we press the off or stop button? The off button is a normally closed switch, so pressing it will cause the contacts to open. What happens to the 230 volts that was passing through the switch? 230 volts remains on wire B, but wire C and everything after it loses the voltage. The result is that terminal A2 has no voltage and the contactor coil drops out, along with the contacts L1, T1, L2, T2, L3, T3 and 13, 14. Note that neutral is still connected and the 400 volts 3 phase is still present at the terminals L1, L2 and L3. The motor has stopped. When the off button is released, the switch resorts back to being a normally closed switch. 230 volts passes along wires C, D and E as far as terminal 14, but that is where it stops. Voltage cannot reach terminal A2, so the contactor remains in the off or de-energized state and the motor remains off. To make the motor start again, we would need to press the green on or start button. What would happen if the motor was running and the overload relay tripped? And will the motor auto restart if the overload relay is reset? Let's look. This is a drawing of a typical overload relay. It's important that all motor circuits, except the very low power motors, have some form of overload protection. The rating plate on the side of the electric motor should be checked and an overload with an appropriate current rating installed. Motors operate at their most efficient and consume the least current when working at their as designed speed and load. The motor overload relay will have an adjustable dial to set the amps at which it will operate. The dial should be set to exactly what the motor rating plate indicates or the manufacturer's instructions. Not more, not less. If the overload does trip at the required motor setting, we do not turn the overload setting up. We find out why it is tripped, correct the problem and reset everything. In fault-free normal operation, a bimetallic strip will allow current from one of the phases to pass through it. The strip will become warm as the current flows and that is to be expected. If the overload is set correctly, then the heat generated in the bimetallic strip will be minimal. However, if we overload the motor 
say we load a half ton conveyor with two tons of parcels, the motor will draw extra current. This will cause the bimetallic strip to heat up. The heat will be above that which you can easily lose and the strip will distort. At a certain point, the distortion will be enough to cause the normally closed contacts at terminals 95 and 96 to open and will break the control circuit wiring. This is the control circuit drawing showing the overload relay opening its normally closed contacts. 230 volts can get as far as wire D, but no further. Terminal A2 loses its 230 volts and the contactor coil de-energizes. The contactor drops out and all its relay contacts return to a state of normally open. The motor has stopped. So the overload relay has tripped. We've taken all the heavy parcels off the conveyor and allowed the bimetallic strip to cool sufficiently that we can reset the overload. But the motor will not restart as 230 volts cannot get beyond terminal 14. For safety, we must manually restart the motor by pressing the start button again. If all is as it should be, the motor will start. Motors should not auto restart. They should be configured so that a manual reset is required. Having said that, some smaller motors in domestic and commercial use, such as refrigerators and vending machines, some cooling systems and similar, will auto restart. But these will be closed systems where the risks associated with an auto restart have been considered by the manufacturer along with relevant testing. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful and that a little more knowledge has found its way into your mental toolbox. Electric motors are used extensively in commercial and industrial premises. Understanding how they work and how the control systems are connected together is easy to learn and understand and can lead to others holding you in high regard for your knowledge and competence. Not everybody understands electric motors. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer or smart device. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.